Hi, in this video we will look into estimating how innovation shifts organizations from where they are to where they plan to go. Subject to where you live, you are likely to be exposed to statements about the world of opportunity. The associated phrase is disrupting the market. We will explore what is generally meant by it and how innovation ideas can shatter conventions and redefine industries. Surely you have heard about disruption. It is often mentioned in the context of innovation, where it is possible to use radical innovation to disrupt the industry. The examples that are often used to symbolize disruption are Apple's iPhone or Tesla's electric vehicles. The place where it all fails is Kodak and their innovation of digital camera technology, which they then failed to pursue. They purposefully decided not to drive that technology ahead. As a result, the others overtook them and revolutionized the way we take photos today. So let's look at what it's needed to make innovation succeed. The magic potion contains three ingredients. A feasible solution must be a part of the mix to solve encountering problems. Viable exploitation is needed or else we do not get paid at the end of the month. There is a need to commercialize solutions to keep the organizations running. Customer value is needed as that is what makes solutions attractive to the users who are then willing to maintain a healthy relationships with the solution provider. If all three factors are finely balanced, there is a good chance of innovation to be supported by the organization in the long term. Innovation that keeps customers happy and pays the bills is welcome most of the time. What happens when the three-part mixture goes beyond the standard norm? Different literature considers the shown terminology in different ways. The important aspects is that we offer some assets, which are plotted here on the x-axis, and we are serving some markets that is plotted on the y-axis. Tackling the core markets is based on small continuous improvements that could be a part of everyday operations. The resulting changes are generally unlikely to conquer new customer segments. Breakthrough innovations demand a better understanding of customer needs and ideally cooperative innovations. The outcomes must include unique features with previously missing user benefits. As often happens, such innovation comes with new business models and is consequently a lot less common. The least common and most disruptive innovation type is radical innovation, which generally allows expansion into new markets and provides greater growth potential. The top right corner is where the changes are so radical that the company is unlikely to handle them without significant restructuring. The key focus of innovation management is the diagonal from the bottom left to the top right. The closer an organization gets to the top right corner, the more importance must be placed on cross-functional thinking. Innovation management becomes more complex. While this graph is not deterministic and there is an element of randomness and subjectivity if wishing to precisely measure the point at which an organization is, the graph is a useful discussion or brainstorming tool to bring teams together and discuss where an organization is and where it plans to be. The reasons for such conversations include the need to understand where the team or individuals perform the best of their ability. Some teams are yearning for extreme innovations, while others are more comfortable in more status quo situations. What is crucial to understand is that it is generally not possible to remain in extreme points forever. Radical innovations sooner or later need to be brought back home, i.e. the outcomes must be integrated into organization and commercialized or else they become a bottomless investment pit. Also, some organizations would likely have teams that are always performing at the specific point of this graph. For example, a manufacturing department is likely to be close to the bottom left corner, while early R&D activities are more likely to wander towards the breakthrough and radical sections. It is important to remember that different degrees of innovation apply to each dimension of innovation and combination of different dimensions are crucial for greater market impact. The matrix helps agree and decide the role of innovation in one's organization. Considering different areas of that matrix, we must also think of dimensions of innovation. While process and product innovation create value, they are often limited by the existing business model. Hence, in general terms, business model innovation is the greatest value creator. A simple example could be the shift in 
airplane engine ownership towards jet engine as a service, where the manufacturer is responsible for the maintenance of the engines, while the airline pays for the operational time and no downtimes. No matter what is being innovated, someone stands at the helm and leads the change. Leadership is about change, but the question is what to do when facing strong resistance to change. It could be frustrating, but it is a natural defense mechanism. If it comes from me, then I will consider it as innovation. However, if it comes from someone else, then I would see it as a change and might not be too keen on it. In essence, that is a part of human nature, as humans fear sudden change. The question is how to handle the situation when change is needed, but resistance to change is present. The first question is to ask oneself, why do I need to perform the change? The answer to that is in the definition of innovation, which tells us that it is about bringing on board something new. That something new implies a change. If that change is sudden, it brings along a sense of unfamiliarity. Bringing people on board takes time and their pace is likely to greatly differ. They might need empathic support and time to adapt. Imagine a situation when transformative change is on the horizon, but we might need to find a way to bring others on board. If that is a big opportunity, we might wish not to miss it. Cotter's eight steps of change might be a useful method to conquer this challenge. The first step is about creating a spark in the form of a shared purpose that drives the organization forward. The second step ensures that we have others on board to support each other, as making a big change alone is difficult. A common vision and strategy are developed to map direction in step three. Those are communicated in step four to embed the change vision deeply. Step five is about empowering others, as autonomy cultivates change agents. Step six is about demonstrating early short-term successes to bring others on board as they realize that the path ahead is possible and the sense of fear drops down. Those early victories, no matter how small, reinforce the sense that progress is attainable. Step seven is about persistently building on those successes and embedding the results into the culture. Cotter's final step, integrating change into the culture turning the cultural transformation into a new norm. In summary, while it is difficult to estimate the exact position of an organization at the innovation ambition matrix, knowing where an organization is and where it needs to be is highly beneficial for defining innovation strategy and for determining steps that need to be taken to keep the teams motivated to innovate. How to get there is a matter for leaders to figure out and lead the change by example.